step three, faults. So I like to start drawing uh, on my map with faults. Um, I find it much easier later on when it comes to drawing lithologies and boundaries to have the fault there. So when I draw the offset, it doesn't uh, need to be corrected later on uh, when it comes to drawing the faults if it's off. So as I use as the pencil tool, you can also use the curvature tool, which is three places above to the right. Uh, I then draw over the line um, and just continue tracing that line all the way to the top. Just before you watch the rest of this video, I'd like to divert you to update one fault brushes. In this video, I show you a much easier and faster way to produce faults for your maps, um, which don't involve you drawing the lines and boxes individually. But there are some useful tips nonetheless in this video. So I didn't want to delete it entirely at the moment. Okay, thanks. So you can see here, I'm just following that line. But when it comes to here, I kind of go off the line a little bit. So what I do is I go back with the pencil tool and just simply draw over the mistake to correct it, rather than rubbing out that line, which may take some time, and then redrawing it. Um, this is why I really like the pencil tool, um, just because it makes life easier for correcting things. You'll see the whole time I've been drawing this line, this fault line, my base map and field maps have been locked that's just to ensure that I don't accidentally move them while I'm doing this and that could be quite difficult to correct later on if you've then drawn the geology. Okay, so that's me finish this line. So what I do is I then select the right line as uh, red as being at fault. I then dash it because it's mostly inferred um, and then I can play around with the size of the dash and the spacing between the dashes and then just check that looks okay. In this case I, I decided I'd rather have smaller dashes. And then I just make the line a little bit narrower. And then that's me done this line. Other than what I need to do now is indicate the throw of the fault. So this is me just showing you that I've done this line. Okay, so to indicate the throw of the fault, I select the rectangle tool just because it's a normal fault here. I then take the line off, dash line, and I just fill it in red instead. And then rotate it so it fits well with the line, or this dash rather. Just put it to the middle of the dash and just correct it. I then find it easiest to copy, so I have exactly the same size of rectangles along the, the line. And then I just paste it. I think in this case I did it like three da every three dashes I put um, a box on, a rectangle on, you, you could do it whatever you feel um, looks right for your map. And then I just continue this process all the way up the line, every third dash, rotating the, the rectangles to fit the line dashes. And just remember, different types of faults have different symbols as well. Okay, so now that I've nearly put all these rectangles on the down thrown side, to indicate the direction of fault movement, I have finished that fault line. And you repeat this with the rest of your faults.